water. Just like... <laughs> like who? Like a pond skater. Who are you thinking? <laughs> no matter. I suppose you thought nothing else in life could surprise you, eh? Wrong. Hey, happen to know how the hell I can walk on that water? Naturally, I know. Since time immemorial have I dwelt in solitude on this shore, and I can testify to the extraordinary nature of the lake. What's so extraordinary about it? I mean, besides the fact that you can walk on its surface. A sword, most wondrous, lies in its depths. I watch over it. The blade may be grasped solely by one who possesses the five chivalric virtues. Folk call me a lot of things, but virtuous? I don't know. Yet I do know, for I know who you are. You have proven yourself capable of great sympathy. You are a man of honor. As many can attest, of humble means yourself, you show generosity to others. Your valor is the stuff of legends. Reason guides your actions, as it does those of all who are wise. You have proven the five chivalric virtues dwell in your heart. Mean the sword's mine? I can dive in and take it? The sword deserves the hand of a master. You must prove your skills are worthy through combat atop the water's surface. Are you ready? Any time. Then draw your blade. This is the last... Proven worthy of wielding the blade, beyond all doubt. Behold. Your Arendite. We've met before. Certainly. The Hermit admitted he knew you, remember? The Lady of the Lake. It is I. Forget not that you are a man right and honorable, devoted to doing good. And for these reasons you received the blade. Now bear it. And I trust this time you shall not lose it. Just wonderful.
Signs of a fight. Paw prints, beastly ones, that's clear. Just on this spot, though. Hmm. Aerial attack. Must have been. Man. Bled to death. Big beast inflicted these wounds. Clear from the claw marks. Must have a toothy smile, too, judging by what ripped his throat open. Draconid. Gotta be. Maybe a basilisk? Except these prints don't belong to any variety I know. Just a little different. Area's dangerous. I'd say there's a basilisk nesting around here. He'd be wise to remain at some distance. Yes, I'm familiar with the matter, and quite proud to say a basilisk does nest here. I look after it personally. Look after it? It's not exactly a pet. Beasts murdering folk who come through here. Just a minute. It does not murder those who do not trespass upon its territory. I posted a number of signs, warnings, specifically to prevent anyone from coming to any harm. Well, a lot of good they did. Got a freshly mangled corpse right here. Most likely a merchant, the poor bloke. Just today, I learned two traders had chosen this route despite the signs. I came as quick as I could to warn them. Too late, alas. I've instructed my servants. They shall take the body, return it to the family with a generous sum as recompense. Who exactly are you? And how do you develop such an interest in the beast? Count Borges. Happy to be of service. As to the beast, well, this subspecies is our dynastic symbol. The Desalfareses have for centuries signed with the Regulus Platinum. As family legend has it, a female of the species rescued an ancestor, a boy at the time, from a burning building. She took the tyke back to her nest, where she fed him as if he were one of her own youngsters. Malarkey. To be sure, but beautiful malarkey it is. Claim this to be the last surviving basilisk? How do you figure? The last of this subspecies. Their population was much larger at one time, see? Before the beech forests were felled. Mean to suggest a direct correlation between beechwood forest density and basilisk populations? Indirect, I prefer to contend. Beechwood forests are the chief habitat of roe deer, you see. In turn, a staple of the basilisk diet. When roe deer grew scarce, basilisks made humans their staple food. Enter the witchers. And thus, we've come to this one last specimen. It's a female. As recently as last year, we still had two. But Yocast's mate passed on, alas. Yocast? Should she not have a name? My father dubbed her in honor of my dear departed mother. Yocast was brooding then. Two eggs. That she cast from her nest, alas, when the male perished. Hmm. Pay the victim's family's compensation? Why? These lands have been my family's for decades, granted to us by Duchess Ademarta. Beyond them, the basilisk ventures not, hunts not, it does not kill or destroy. Provided it is not provoked. Yet if it does destroy, if it kills, I compensate all for the loss from my own coffers. Hmm, <sighs> your coffers. Got a store of sons and husbands in there, to compensate for those shredded by your beast? Naturally, I cannot revive the dead, but I do make generous restitution to their loved ones. Just last summer, I paid a leather tooler's widow 800 crones. This unfortunate merchant's family, to be duly indemnified as well. Where's the basilisk nesting? Any idea? Of course I have an idea. But you don't really expect me to tell you. Those are not toy swords. I know your intentions. Find it myself, then. Easy to track with its distinct paw prints. Mentioned two merchants. So I might also look for the other corpse. Strange. He 
venom make them? Subspecies must be highly toxic. It is so indeed. A wound from a sterling basilisk festers long. Need to brew a potion that'll neutralize that. Busted barrels. Contents spilled all over. Must have been tannin in there. Used to treat leather. Beast smashed the barrels. That's how the scent got on the scale. Yo Coco is so very curious. Strong scents especially intrigue her. The barrels, they must have drawn her in. Drawn her to the caravan. Busted barrels slimed with venom. Hallmarks of an attack. Basilisk must have caught the second victim here. Anyway, got two scents. Venom and tannin. Ought to be enough to track the beast. Why track her at all? Your cast is protected. Her death would forever destabilize the ecosystem. Who knows what would happen? I see unforeseeable consequences down the line. Simply refrain from provoking her. Harm her not, and she too will leave you untouched. I've long suspected they do it on purpose. Sent their goods. They seek to lure the Basilisk to destroy their wares. It allows them to demand compensation from their assurers. dispersed. It seems to be everywhere. Basilisk must be high in the sky. Bloodstains. Clear as day. Sense perceptible again. Just as I expected. Second victim, but relatively unscathed. Basilisk must have been dragging him back to its nest for later. Dropped him for some reason. Wonder why. something, but it's no basilisk screech. Human voices. Not a bat to roost at its nest. Yamo, Harry, prepare the equipment. Beast wandered off somewheres. We got to lure it back. And who might you be? Funny, about to ask you the same. They call us the Reavers. Reavers? Wouldn't happen to hail from Crinfrid, would you? Aye, we do. But how's it you know? And again, who the hell are you? Geralt of Rivia. I'm a Witcher. Know your brethren in arms. Bohold, Kennet and Desperate. New boy, too. Ah, you're that Witcher. Aye. Boho mentioned you. Said you swing a mean sword. A professional. Good you came along. Could take on the brute together. Talk is the venom something horrifying. Could use another pair of hands. Fee what we've gotten from the guild. We'll share it fair and square. You in? Gentlemen, this hurts my ears and pains my heart. You aim to kill your cast? It cannot be. The creature is protected. 
If you fear to lose the guild's reward, I shall repay it, and reward you doubly to leave the beast be. You cannot slay the last living specimen of a near-extinct subspecies? Willing to pay, are you? Long as we do nothing? That's rather novel. What say you to that, master? Far as I know, beasts culled the human race by five already. Beast has to die. We work together, we'll make quick work of it. After all I told you of your caste, you would murder her? Or oh, you will regret this, friend. I know folk. I shall tell them you slew the last surviving specimen. Sorry, Master de Salvares. Actually, not sorry. A monster's a monster. Silvery, plaid, or polka dotted. Last or next to last specimen, doesn't matter. It's a dangerous predator that kills humans. Enough said. Herbalists, alchemists, I know many. They will despise you. I shall tell them of a heartless cur who cares not an ounce for balance in nature. You shall pay arms and legs for their wares. More! Somebody plug this Lorden's gob, eh? Right, Master Witcher. How do we aim to fight the filth? We've crossbows. Comply with bolts while you do the hack and slash. Or all go at it as a bunch, blades and end, fire in our hearts. You decide. You're the one with experience. Use your crossbows, keep her on the ground. Good idea. Do you say her? It's a female, yeah. Hear that, lads? We've a learned witcher here. Hundred spans out, and he spotted what the lizard's got between its legs. <laughs> right now, lads. You've heard a specialist. Ready your crossbows. All good and fine, but the monster's not in its nest. Gotta track it down first. Not at all necessary, Geralt. We looked into it. Gave it a think. Traders use tannin to lure the beast. Who says we can't do the same? You got any tannin? Came into a bit, aye. Yeah, willing to do the honors. There. Grab your bellies! Shoot the bitch down!
work like that to fight to the true witch's side. Prime the way you swung that razor, mate. Mention some fee from a guild. I hear you right. Ha! <laughs> Witcher drives right for the gut. A professional, right thorough. Your share, friend. Every last copper as we agreed. We'll collect us a few of them silver scales and a tail. Proof for the guild, right? And we'll get word of you to some folk. Merchant folk, meaning. They ought to treat you right. Thanks, and farewell. Your cust. My poor, your cust. Cruelly slaughtered like a common beast. Look at my lordling, sobbing over the vermin filth. My poor Yorkast, cruelly 